Today I'm going to teach you guys how to play Hello, It's Me by Todd Rundgren. This is one of my all-time favorite songs, and I'm going to show you guys how to play it exactly the way Todd does on the piano. So let's get started. Let me start by playing the intro for you guys. So this intro is just two chords that go back and forth. G minor 7 and F major 7. So here's the G minor 7. It's G in the left hand, F, B flat, D in the right hand. And then the F major 7 is F in the left hand, E, A, C, right hand. And what you do is hold the root in the left hand typically, but you play eighth notes in the right hand. So you play each chord eight times. So it's something like this. I'm also holding the pedal, because if I didn't, I would get something like this. Which is not really what you want. After you've gone back and forth with those chords twice, you're going to use that progression to start the verse. So when he says, hello, it's me, and he starts singing, the verse starts with those exact chords. So you already know some of it. Let me start from where the lyrics begin and play the verse in its entirety for you guys. So the verse begins with a copy-paste of the introduction that I showed you guys, right? So G minor 7, F major 7, back to G minor 7, F major 7. Now here's where it changes a bit. We're going to go down to E flat major 7. Here's what it looks like, E flat in the left, D, G, B flat in the right. Play it eight times in the same fashion. We come down to D minor seven, which is D in the left hand, C, F, A, right hand. Down a bit more to C minor seven, which is C left hand, B flat, E flat, G right hand. And then finally, the resolution is on B flat major seven, which looks like this. It's B flat down in the left hand, a, D, F up in the right hand. And now you're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to keep the B flat in the left hand, but in the right hand we're going to form an A flat major 7, which is A flat, C, E flat, G. And then we're going to bring that down to G, B flat, D, F, which is a G minor 7. It looks like this. This whole time I'm keeping B flat down in my left hand. And then we're going to go between those two chords that I just showed you, the A flat major 7 and G minor 7 with this exact rhythm. So we hit the A flat major 7 over B flat twice and the G minor 7 over B flat once. Just like that, make sure you do it twice. Now onto the second verse, it's mostly the same as the first verse, except Todd gives us two new starting chords before he brings in familiar stuff from the first verse. You'll see what I mean. So here's how the second verse is gonna start. So these are new chords. But now watch done this before. This is the first verse. So except for those two new chords that we toggled back and forth between twice, 
the rest of what I showed you is like a copy paste of the first verse. So let me show you how this is gonna work. So top of the second verse, left hand plays B flat, and the right hand plays A, D, F, which is B flat major seven, like that. So eight times. And then we bring it down to A minor seven, which is A in the left hand, G, C, E in the right hand. Now go backwards, B flat major seven. And again, A minor seven. And now it's all the stuff from the first verse. So G minor seven. I'll just show you each one slowly so you can watch my fingers. I don't need to say it out loud again. Here's the next one. There's the next one. Next. the hits so I was just pausing on each chord there so you guys could watch my fingers and see what I was doing before I played all the eighth notes so once you have that you're in the bridge so here's what the bridge is going to sound like So let's talk through this bridge. It's a familiar chord that starts the bridge. It's G minor seven, right? You've done this a million times by now, but instead of playing them together, we are going to slightly displace the left and right hands. So the left will strike first on beat one and the right will strike on the end of one like this. So one after the other. But now the next chord, which is F major seven, you can hit the hands together. So it goes like this. Now you can leave a space there, but what Todd does sometimes, or whoever's playing piano with him, sometimes will fill in some space, so you might hear something like this. So notice I added a left right of the F, and then the rest of the F major seven. So I like to do it this way. Feel that it fills out the space nicely. So once you do that, you can copy that rhythmic pattern to the next two things I'm going to show you. Let's move our left hand to C, and let's put the right hand on B flat, E flat, G, giving us a C minor 7. And we're going to do that one and displacement, right? One and, same rhythm. Now we'll strike the hands together on B flat major 7, which is B flat in the left, A, D, F in the right hand. Once again, and it happens twice. And now the last one of those will be here. So what's happening here is D minor seven. So D in the left hand, C, F, A in the right hand. And then C in the left hand, B, E, G, giving us C major seven. Happens twice. So let me just recap that for you. Now after that very last chord, the C major 7, you're going to play two notes, G and A. And that's because we're going to do this. This is the prettiest part of the song. And that melody has been stolen in so many other songs. I love it. So what we're going to do is play G minor 7, but a different inversion from the one we've been playing. It's G in the left hand, by the way, up high, right? I'm not playing G down here. It's very close to middle C. And the different inversion I'm using in the right hand is D, F, B flat from bottom to top. And then after I strike that, 
my pinky plays a C. Then I bring it down to a new inversion of F major 7. That's F in the left hand, C, E, A, right hand. Pinky will then strike a B flat. And then we come down to C minor 7, which is C in the left hand, B flat, E flat, G. You've done this before in the right hand. And after I strike it, my pinky plays A. And then finally, B flat major 7, which is B flat left hand, A, D, F right hand. So it looks like this. Once you have that, you're going to play the B-flat major 7 you landed on one more time. And then after that, you're going to move to a variation of the C minor 7, which you've done. But we're going to get rid of the G up here with the pinky, so it's going to be B-flat, E-flat, F. This is called a C minor 11. And you can play it four times, like that. And then we're going to go to C7. So keep the C in the left hand and play B flat, E, G in the right. So once again, Be careful with the timing there. There are many different ways to count out the time signature change that happens there, but if you guys are here watching this tutorial, I'm assuming you don't want to read the music. So let me try to explain it to you using basic numbers and the easiest form possible. Once he goes, I think of these as groups of three. So I think one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So they're like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, and we're back in four, four. This is just one of many ways to think about it, but if you just count that out mentally, you can't go wrong, even though it might not be the most practical way to write it on paper, right? I probably wouldn't write three, eight, three, eight, three, eight, five, eight. There are better ways to do it, but Think of it that way if it helps. Following the bridge, you're essentially gonna play the same thing as the first verse for your third verse. So it's gonna be, right, exactly the same. And then you're gonna play a bridge again. So, right, all the same. Except at the end of the bridge, there is a modulation, which is a key change. And you're gonna play a lot of this material just up a half step. So coming out of the second bridge, which is otherwise identical to the first bridge, right? Here's the change now. We're gonna modulate from this C7 up a half step to D flat seven or C sharp seven, same thing. So just take each finger and push it up one key. And I like to play eighth notes here to build up the crescendo and the excitement a little bit. Just like that. Now, we're gonna start our final verse on G sharp minor seven. Sure, you could call it A flat minor seven. I'm going to stick to whatever is enharmonically easiest to describe. Generally, I find that for this modulation, the sharp keys are easier to think about, but you could really go either way. So anyway, G sharp minor seven. G sharp left hand, F sharp, B, D sharp in the right hand. And then we're gonna come down to F sharp major seven. Like that, but I only play it three times. Because coming up is this cool little hit. So let me teach you that. It starts with F sharp major nine, just like that, and then G sharp minor seven, A sharp minor seven, or B flat minor seven. So it looks like this. And then we pick up where we left off on the G sharp minor seven. F sharp major seven. Now moving on, E major seven. 
looks like this. E in the left hand, D sharp, G sharp, B in the right hand. And here's the next thing. D sharp minor seven, here are the notes. Next thing, C sharp minor seven. And then B major seven. Now we're going to break the pattern a bit to play A major 7 over B. So it's a four note chord, A, C sharp, E, G sharp. And then keep the B in the left hand and then bring the right hand down to G sharp minor 7. And then toggle between those two with the hits like we did in all of the other verses. Once again, now because we're at the end, we're going to use that figure to fade out. This is when he sings, think of me, right? He just says that over and over. So this just fades out. So you can actually fade it out too, like this. Maybe do something like this an octave. All right, just an idea. There are plenty of ways to end it, but I tend to do a live fade out, move up and up the octave until it just kind of dies out like that. And those are all the pieces you need to play the song. I really hope you all enjoyed this Todd Rundgren tutorial. This is one of my all-time favorite songs. It's near and dear to my heart, so I'm glad that I got to teach it to you guys. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know if you want more Todd Rundgren songs like this, and I would absolutely be open to doing them. Anyway, like this video, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next one.